as a manager, it is one of your key responsibilities to ensure that the people you lead are successful in what they do, that they get the job done and deliver results. But what kind of results and how is success actually measured? That's where the idea of goal setting comes into play. Stay tuned as we explore seven strategies that will help you set effective goals that get results now and in the future. Hello and a very warm welcome to the channel. My name is Sabine Renner. I'm an organizational psychologist, leadership and personal development coach and trainer and researcher in the field of positive psychology. On this channel, you will find proven and actionable tips, tools and strategies to empower aspiring leaders to take the lead and succeed at work and beyond. Goal setting is one of the most important tasks that should be very high up on each manager's to-do list. Clearly defined goals provide direction, a compass that guides people's day-to-day -day efforts and points them towards success. Now, in theory, goal setting sounds like an easy to implement process. However, there are a couple of oftentimes overlooked aspects that can have a tremendous effect on the overall effectiveness of your goal setting. Let's take a step back. What typically happens is that at the beginning of the year, senior management within an organization comes together and defines high-level goals for the organization to be achieved. Now, ideally, these goals should be informed by the company's or organization's vision and its related strategy. So, in simple terms, the organization is at a place A right now and wants to get to a place Z over a certain period of time. How to get there? Well, that is being defined in the strategy. And goals are nothing more than milestones along the way and consequently should be derived from and be in alignment with an organization's vision and strategy. Now, once these goals are known at the organizational level, they are broken down further and further from department to team to employee-related goals. And this is where we as managers typically come into play. Here are seven strategies that will help you in setting goals for your people effectively. Strategy number one, set goals from the inside out. Now, what do I mean by that? You might have heard about the idea of the golden circle, a concept that was introduced by Simon Sinek in 2006 and then popularized in his famous TED talk and book, Start With Why. The underlying idea is as follows. Every single organization and individual within that organization functions at three levels. What do we do? How we do it? And why we do it? Or in the context of goal setting, one could say, what goals do we have? how we attain them via processes and systems, and why those goals actually matter. Now, here's the issue. We tend to communicate outside in. That means that we outline what needs to be done, define the goals, and possibly even discuss how to get there. But often we forget the why. Why does this goal actually matter? Why is it important to achieve it? The goal in itself, nor the way to get there, typically don't inspire people. Yes, of course, they'll get the job done, most likely because it's part of their roles and responsibility. But why should they actually care to go the extra mile? Why should they care to be all in? In his TED talk, Sinek said when talking about customer loyalty, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. In the context of goal setting, we could say our team members don't commit to what we tell them to do, they commit to why it matters. So as managers, let's lead others not only by sharing the what needs to be done, but even more importantly, by sharing the why. Strategy number two, make it relevant to them. Now, building on strategy one, we already discussed how important it is to outline the why. But the why should not only be linked to the benefits of the organization and the team, it should also and very importantly be linked to the person in charge of achieving the goal and his or her personal aspirations and needs. It should fit into an individual's development path. The more interesting it is from a personal or professional development point of view, the higher typically the motivation and engagement levels. So again, contextualize a goal and make sure you outline how the achievement of the goal could be mutually beneficial. Strategy number three, be smart. You might have come across the term smart goal setting. Smart represents an easy to remember formula for effective goal setting. Setting goals in a smart way means that we are specific. What is it exactly that needs to be achieved? What is a must? What is a nice to have? That we make it measurable. That means that we define how success could and will be measured. Ensure it's achievable, which means that the individual has first of all all resources needed to get there and that he or she can actually get there assuming that he or she puts in the dedicated effort. Now, achievable should not be confused with easy. On the contrary, you might and should consider assigning a stretch goal to facilitate learning and growth along the way. Highlight the relevance. That means that we help the person connect the dots, understand the bigger picture and share the why. And last but not least, to define a timeline and make it time bound so that everybody has the same understanding about the time horizon at stake. And if needed, in a very 
complex or longer term projects, you should actually also consider defining milestones and deadlines for these milestones along the way. Strategy number four, make it system based. So far, we talked about the question of how to set goals effectively, but that is only part of the success equation. Goals give us direction. They tell us where we are supposed to go in the context of organizations or where we want to go if it comes to our own personal endeavors. Knowing where to go is very important. Otherwise, we put ourselves at a huge risk of taking one detour after the other. But let's assume we know where we want to go. We still have to make sure that we get there. That means we need a pathway. We need processes and systems that will get us there, one action at a time. Author and habit expert James Clear wrote in his highly recommendable book Atomic Habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones, that we do not rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. So no matter how thought through your goals are, make sure that you or your team members spend the time to back them up with the respective systems processes and pathways to get there. Think about feasible ways to increase your likelihood of success. Strategy number five, stay flexible. In particular, when you're assigning goals that are rather long term or which have never been tackled before or where people have to act in a rapidly evolving environment, it is very, very important to allow for some flexibility and to accommodate for new information, new findings or changes that affect the previously thought through and agreed path. If the path is unknown or you have little insight about how long specific actions will take or what exactly the outcome of an action will be, do yourself as well as the people you lead a favor and phrase your goals accordingly. Define the overall objective, outline the specific requirements, but then allow for some flexibility along the way. Ideally by using, for example, a process of regular milestone check-ins or by using progress or input goals instead of just purely focusing on outcome goals. Strategy number six allow for growth. It's very tempting to assign goals that focus on shorter term performance objectives. However, the moment we apply a longer term perspective, we soon realize that our ability to succeed in the future significantly depends on our ability to learn, grow and develop ourselves and to come up with new ideas which have not been there. It requires us to consciously invest in our progress instead of relentlessly pursuing short-term outcome objectives that can be measured according to very specific terms. So we should focus on more than just outcome-based success or failure and we should provide some time and space for people to step outside of their performance zone and to step into their growth and progress zone for their and our future success. Strategy number seven. Don't just define, but align on goals. Now, here's the last strategy. It's an obvious one, but unfortunately, this oftentimes seems to be another one of those overlooked opportunities to show up as a leader. If we want to effectively lead our people, we should not only set and define goals, we should also discuss them with those in charge of getting the work done and we should seek alignment. Ideally, we provide the big picture as well as the goals for the team and then ask people for their perspectives and ideas on how their individual goals could look like. A good question to ask is, what is it that you can do so that the team or the organization can achieve the following? Now, this doesn't mean that goal setting is a winched concert. Some things just need to get done, but we should do our best to open up a dialogue, to share the why and connect the dots and be there to answer questions, address concerns and come up with an aligned set of goals. Seeking alignment and agreement also increases the chances of people being more committed and motivated and to really own the goal and feel responsible for its achievement. A great basis to successfully get the job done. Curious to learn more proven actionable tips, tools and strategies that will help you and your team succeed? Well, then hit the subscribe button to stay tuned and check out this video in which I explore five scientifically proven ways to motivate your team members. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.